Hello everyone, welcome back to the e-learning space of MGM Higher Secondary School, Bukaro. This is the second video for Unit 6, Section C of Class 8 English Main Course Book. Section C of Unit 6 is a prose titled, The Eyes Have It. It is written by the famous storyteller, Ruskin Bond. About the story. The story traces an ironic encounter between two people who are blind but are unaware of each other's blindness. The narrator himself, a young man, meets a young girl in a train compartment. The narrator finds the young girl to be attractive and strikes up a conversation with her. We have already read the story and analyzed it in our first video on this lesson. In this video, we shall discuss the story in a little more detail along with the textual exercises. So we know it is the story of a blind man who thought he was very smart at behaving like a sighted man, like a person who is able to see. Once he was on a train with a female passenger, just the two of them alone. The man started a conversation with the girl without giving away with his blindness. The two talked about the beauty of the hillsides that they were passing by. At Saharanpur, the girl got down after a few pleasant words and the man really felt lonely. When the train was about to leave, a male passenger got in. From this new companion, the narrator learned something about the girl who was now gone. What was so very special about the girl? She also was blind just like the narrator. Even she did not give away that she was blind and the narrator here who himself was playing a character pretending that he is sighted was fooled by a blind girl who never gave away her blindness. Setting of the story. The story is very simple but interesting. Everything happens in the train compartment where the blind narrator encounters a blind girl. The time is October when Masuri looks beautiful. Right from the beginning of the story, it is full of ironical turns and twists. Bond illuminates the experience of the blind through pure humor. Up to Rohanna, the narrator was alone in the compartment. The couple who bade her goodbye were probably her parents. The real fun of the story lies in keeping the narrator's blindness a secret. The narrator met a blind girl, but the narrator does not realize at first that the girl herself is blind. That is why he is hiding his blindness from the girl. Consciously trying to keep blindness a secret in every moment has created a bit of humor in the story. He pretends to be what he is not. In spite of his blindness, he appreciates the beauty of the girl. He also gives an account of the natural beauty outside the compartment. But the humor turned into a joke when he discovers that the girl is also blind. Dear students, let us now analyze the story a bit more critically. Ruskin Bond's short story, The Eyes Have It, illustrates Bond's art of storytelling. It tells a simple tale in a very lucid style with a deep insight into the psychology of men. Like Mopasa, Ruskin Bond also uses common people to create an interesting situation. The story contains all the features of Bond's art, a known setting, a search for beauty, human frailty, humor and irony explored in a very simple language. As an ideal short story, it is short in length. It can be read at one go. Within a short range of context, it reveals a well-chosen fragment of life. The number of characters is limited to three only. The blind narrator, the girl and the new companion. Some other characters are also mentioned like the parents of the girl and the aunt she is supposed to meet at the railway station. There are also some porters and vendors mentioned. However, they only are used to develop the natural setting of the story. There is no scope of narration, no events separate from the main story. 
everything is presented through the eyes of that blind narrator. This short story presents the poetry of life in a short range. The narrator was a blind man. His eyes were sensitive only to light and darkness. He was going to Dehradun by train. In the train, he met a girl and had conversation with her. After the girl's departure, another passenger entered the compartment. The narrator discovered through the eyes of this new companion that the girl was also blind. The first person narrative technique reveals the limitations and sufferings of the blind. So it is a story of human frailty with some added humor of irony. And it's a beautiful story. Look at the title. The eyes have it. What does it stand for? It is that sparkle, is that spirit, is that life, that energy which only can be possessed by the eyes. You may use your other senses to gaze the world around, but it is the eyes that help you not just see, look, but understand the things around. To get an understanding of somebody's personality, a glimpse is very important. And it is the eyes that help us to gauge that personality. It is the eyes that help us get that first impression. Let us now come to the textual exercises about the passage. Answer these questions with reference to the context. Yes, October is the best time. Who said this and to who? The narrator said this to the girl. Why did the speaker say this? The narrator said this in response to the girl saying that she loved the hills in Masuri, especially in October. What is October the best time for? October is the best time to visit Masuri. The hills are covered with wild dahlias. The sun is delicious. And one can sit in front of a log fire and drink a little brandy. Most of the tourists have gone and the roads are quiet and almost deserted. From this kind of an explanation, who would ever think that the girl and the narrator both are indeed blind? But the next question removed my doubts. Who does her refer to? Her refers to the girl traveling in the same train compartment as the narrator. What doubts does the narrator have? The narrator had doubts whether the girl had noticed that he was blind or not. What was the question and how did it remove his doubts? The question, why don't you look out of the window, removed his doubts that she had noticed he was blind. She had clearly not noticed his impairment and asked him to look out of the window and see the weather for himself. Coming to true and false, there were only three people in the compartment. False. The girl was traveling to Masuri. False. The narrator knew there were many animals in the forest near Dera. You will have to come up with the answer. The girl didn't like to be told that she had a pretty face. She liked short train journeys. Answer these and complete it in your textbook. Come to the question answers part. How did the girl's parents show their concern for her? The girl's parents seemed very anxious about her comfort and the woman gave the girl detailed instructions as to where to keep her things, when not to lean out of the windows and how to avoid speaking to strangers. Why was she startled when the narrator spoke? She was startled when the narrator spoke because she had not realized that there was anyone else in the compartment other than her. What voices did the narrator hear when the train entered the Saharanpur station? When the train entered the Saharanpur station, the narrator heard the shouting of porters and vendors and a high-pitched female voice near the carriage door, most probably belonging to the girl's aunt. Why did the narrator remain silent when the next fellow traveller came into the compartment? The narrator remained silent when the next fellow traveller came into the compartment as he found the window and sat in front of it after the train left Saharanpur. He figured that since so many things were happening outside the window, it could be a fascinating game guessing what went on out there. 
Number five, what did the new passenger assume from the narrator's silence? The new passenger assumed from the narrator's silence that he was disappointed that the new passenger was not as attractive a traveling companion as the girl who had just left. What did the second man notice about the girl? The second man had noticed the girl's beautiful eyes, which were of no use to her as she was completely blind. Why was the second man puzzled when he was asked if the girl's hair was long or short? The second man was puzzled when the narrator asked if the girl's hair was long or short because he had not yet figured out that narrator was blind as well and had not been able to see the girl. Come to discuss and write. What do you think the narrator means by saying once again I had a game to play? Why do you think the narrator wanted to keep his blindness a secret? Do you think the title of the story is appropriate? Why? Something for you to answer. Look up these idiomatic expressions within the word I in them in your dictionary. Keep an eye on, have eyes only for, with one's eyes opens, a sight for sore eyes, see eye to eye, open one's eyes. So these are different idioms and their meanings you have to search in your dictionary and then use them in sentences of your own. In the story, the girl's aunt is described as formidable. Meaning that the narrator might either have felt frightened or been very impressed at the mention of the aunt. Now refer to a dictionary or a thesaurus for four synonyms for the word formidable. Do you think they can be used interchangeably? Why? Try using them in sentences of your own. Come to the grammar part. Transformation of sentences. Read the sentence, she is an interesting girl. This is a declarative sentence. What an interesting girl she is. This is an exclamatory sentence. The structures of these sentences are different from each other, but the meanings are the same. That is, the girl being referred to is interesting. This restructuring of sentence while keeping its meaning unchanged is called transformation of sentences. Look at the examples. Affirmative to negative and vice versa. The girl liked the hills. The girl did not dislike the hills. From assertive to exclamatory, you must be disappointed. How disappointed you must be? From assertive to interrogative, that girl was nice. Wasn't that girl nice? From imperative to interrogative, tell me about her. Can you tell me about her? Now, based on this understanding, change these into negative sentences without changing their meanings. Iron is a useful metal. Iron is not a useless metal. I am telling you the truth. I am not telling you a lie. The library is closed today. The library is not open today. So, rest of these sentences, do them on your own. Coming to exercise B, transform the following sentences according to the instructions given in brackets. Remember that the meaning of the sentence should remain the same. Drink your milk, change into interrogative. Will you drink your milk? Are we on time for the match? Change to affirmative. We are on time for the match. Rest of these sentences. Do it on your own. Come to time to listen. This is a speaking and listening exercise. So listen to a short account of a young boy named K. Janartanan Keshavan who overcame the odds to become an achiever based on what you hear. Make notes on the boy's life. This is a short audio clipping. Now use this three-part questionnaire to ask your partner about his or her way of living. Ask them to give reasons for their answers. These audio you will find in the audio library for the book, The English Channel. And accordingly, you're going to do this exercise. Coming to time to write. 
Now here is notice writing. We have a separate video on notice writing. You already know the format of notice writing. Here is a guideline for you. You are a secretary of the student talent club in your school. You have organized a story writing competition for classes 6 to 8. Write a notice in no more than 60 words giving information about the competition. Write about the date and new cash prizes for winners. Add details of the story categories, adventure, comedy, fairy tale. Minimum word limit and the last day for registration, September 10, it's mentioned in the question for the competition. Don't forget to add that writing paper will be provided. So these are the details that you have to include in your notice writing. The format is given, the guideline is given. You shall do it in your copies. Coming to life skills. How do you respond to people who are differently abled? How do you think people with different capabilities from yours might want to be treated. Now, this is something based on your understanding of the lesson and how your emotions for them are. So, if you see a differently abled person, how do you treat them? Do you treat them any different from how you treat other people? If yes, why? If no, why? Both parts you have to answer. Coming to the assignments, read the lesson and mark the tough words. Learn the word meanings, including the ones given in the glossary. Complete all the textual exercises in the textbook as we have discussed in this video. Do exercise A from read to understand given on page 131 in your English copies. Do exercise A and B from the grammar section given on page 133 in your English copies and practice the notice writing given to you on page 135. Based on your understanding of the lesson, give a pictorial representation of the story and color it. That brings us to the end of our lesson and the second video on the prose, The Eyes Have It by Ruskin Bond. Thank you and take care.